Hi everyone, let's take a look at the following thinking problem. Is there a value of k for which the limit of k x squared minus 6x plus 3 minus k all over x squared plus 3x plus 2 as x is approaching to negative 2 exists? If so, find the value of k and evaluate the limit. So before we start step 1, k is the same k value in the limit. So now we start with step 1. We copy the limit. So again, you take the limit as x is approaching to negative 2 of kx squared minus 6x plus 3 minus k all over x squared plus 3x plus 2. If the limit does exist, that means you can evaluate this. And if you look at the denominator, you can factor it. So you copy down the limit as x is approaching to negative 2. You copy the numerator, kx squared minus 6x plus 3 minus k all over. And if you go back to uh, the basic concept of simple factoring, x squared plus 3x plus 2 is factored as x plus 1 times x plus 2. Now, if you're doing this, you're asking yourself one question. Because the limit does exist, that's the assumption we're making at least, somehow I can divide this and I can find the quotient. So again, if you go back to uh, the basic concepts behind uh, events functions, whether you did long division, synthetic, uh, you can divide this. So the faster approach is to divide this by first looking at the numerator and writing down the coefficients. So specifically, you're separating it into three parts. There's k, the first number at the uh, beginning. There's also negative 6, which is the second part. And the third part, 3 minus k, that's going to be the third number. So let's go back, add this in. So k, negative 6, and 3 minus k. So all this means is we should be able to factor um, or divide by one of these terms. And again, notice I'm dividing by x plus 2. And there's a reason for this, because if you go back to the limit, uh, right now the limit says x is approaching to negative 2. And you know if you plug in negative 2, you're going to end up getting a 0 at the bottom, which most likely you're going to get a 0 from the top, so it's going to be indeterminate. So the question becomes, how can I factor the top in such a way that there's an x plus 2 somewhere? And that's why I'm dividing it by x plus 2. And again, because you're dividing it by x plus 2, you write down negative 2 here. And for those who kind of forgot, if it's positive 2 or negative 2, all you have to do is equate this to 0, solve for x. And because x is negative 2, you write down negative 2. Now, there are three basic steps here, and the steps are copy, multiply, add. And you keep going with steps two and three until you get to the end. So step one, I copy k. Step two, I multiply negative two with k. That's negative two k. Step three, I'm going to add this column. That's going to be negative six minus two k. I go back to step two, I'm going to multiply. That's going to give you positive 12 plus 4k. And last but not least, you're going to add the column. That's going to be 15 plus 3k. Now remember, this last number, it's always the remainder. It's always the remainder. And if you can factor the top in such a way that you get x plus 2, the remainder must be 0. So you go back and you say, well, 15 plus 3k is going to be 0. This means 15 equals to negative 3k. The opposite of multiplying by negative 3 is to divide by negative 3. So k is going to be negative 5. Now, what this really means is you can go back, plug in k to be negative 5. So now, if you look at the new limit, it's going to be the limit as x is approaching to negative 2 of negative 5x squared minus 
6x plus 3 minus negative 5 divided by x plus 1 times x plus 2. So what this means is if you collect like terms, you're going to get the limit as x is approaching to negative 2. If you look at the numerator, that's going to be negative 5x squared minus 6x. 3 minus negative 5 is going to be positive 8 divided by, and again, you're copying the denominator as is. Now, remember, your goal is to evaluate this. So you have to go back and factor. Now, of course, mentally, you should never skip step one. When you plug in x to be negative 2, this becomes 0 divided by 0. So mentally, you can say, oh, this is not going to give you the answer that you're looking for. Then you move on to step two, which is factoring. So let's continue up here. Now, if you factor the top, what happens is you take the limit as x is approaching to negative 2. And I'm factoring a couple of things here. First, I'm going to factor the negative 1 to the front. And at the same time, I'm going to complex factor everything else. So when you factor negative 1 to the front, uh, that becomes 5x squared plus 6x minus 8. And this factors into 5x minus 4 times x plus 2. As expected, you copy the denominator. And again, the fact that x minus 2, or I mean x plus 2, divides by x plus 2, this equals to 1. This is telling you you're on the right track. Then you go back to step 1, which means you plug in x to be negative 2. So this equals to negative, open bracket, 5 times negative 2, minus 4, all over negative 2 plus 1. And if you work this out, that's going to be negative times negative 10 minus 4. That's going to be 14 divided by negative 1, so negative 14. So again, we have found both the k value, which is negative 5, and we evaluated the limit, which is negative 14. I hope this makes sense.